Well, welcome to my DHP Manila Metal Bed Review and Step-by-Step -step Assembly Guide. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to take this bed from a, pair, from a pile of parts to get it fully assembled like this. I'm gonna talk you through the areas where you need a bit of care and concern. I'm also gonna show you that just one person can assemble this bed on their own. So if you're a single parent, don't worry, I've got you covered in this video. It's a little tricky in places, but one person can build this bed on their own. Want to see how we got it? Then keep watching. And if you like what you see today, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Well, welcome to my DHP Manila Metal Bed Review and Step-by-Step -step Assembly Guide. My daughter has been bought this double bed for her 11th birthday, and yours truly is going to put the thing together step-by-step -step in this video and show you if it can be assembled by one person. If it can't, I will talk through the places where you're going to need a second pair of hands to help you out. But fingers crossed, one person will be able to do this on their own. The first thing to do, the first thing I'm going to do, remove all this extra plastic packaging. That thing comes incredibly well packed. They're obviously worried about any damage in transit, so the, the whole thing has a very high quality feel to it. It's almost packaging overkill, but be assured, there's not going to be any scratches or anything, fingers crossed, on any of this lot. Now I've laid out all the component parts on there. The first job I'm going to do is remove all of that plastic. However, in the instruction manual, it comes with a handy tick list. There's a little tick box next to every single part on here. So you can go through when you first get everything out of the box, tick all of the parts off on there, including all of the screws, and it comes with everything you need to assemble it, including a four mil Allen key, a hex wrench, and all of those small parts on there are in this box on here. Now, it says on the outside of the box, small parts, blah, blah, blah. For your convenience, we've included more plastic plugs than are required to assemble the unit. Keep these extra parts in a safe place as replacements. So, when we find those plastic plugs, so if you do this job and you've got extra plastic plugs left at the end, nothing to worry about. Now, I've got the four bed posts on, but the first thing I'm gonna do in this job, unbox all of this and get rid of all this plastic packaging so we can see exactly what we've got for our money and then how we go about assembling it. And while it comes with a four millimeter Allen key in here, I would highly recommend using something like this Black & Decker Rotel bit. This is a purely a screwdriver as opposed to like a cordless drill where it's gonna give you maybe too much power and you don't wanna risk stripping any of the threads on something like this when you're screwing into the metal. Hope that makes sense, but if you get one of these, it will save you an awful lot of time, particularly if you're a single person doing this on your own. And while I'm gonna talk you through the assembly step-by-step -step of the Miller metal bed, it comes with a handy leaflet from DHP saying, need help, call us, so you can get help with assembly questions, missing parts, damaged parts, etc etc which is really good to see if you are struggling but fingers crossed i'll show you how to put it together right today okay i've taken everything out of the packaging so we can see exactly what we've got to work with and it then makes it much easier to tick everything off against the checklist now in terms of everything being labeled up now in terms of the labeling of the packaging everything appears pretty good like we've got the letter l on all three of these brackets m on each of these three and we can see here We've got M and L, three of each on there, so it's fairly straightforward on here. This bag, clearly marked K and Y, all I've done is cut the top open at the minute rather than, loosen, rather than take the bits out. We've got our two bags here, very clearly marked, extra. And we've got our bag of hardware with all the screw sizes and the screw numbers marked on them individually. And then we've got our four millimeter Allen key and our hex wrench. So time to go to work. And there is a little diagram here showing what the bed should look like when it's all put together. Now, in terms of this hardware, be aware, quite a bit of it looks the same. Like these four rails on here, all look identical, right? Now you do need to pay attention because you look at all four of those rails and if you think, yeah, they're the same, Rich. If you look at them, these two on the right here are very different at the top compared to the two on the left. Some of these some of these brace bars here these two are identical these two are identical but it would be very easy to pick those up and get them confused with this one which has got two holes in either end marked part g on that now i will say these ah, i was just going to say these don't have any marking on but we've got h marked on there and h marked on there so i'm assuming yeah i on that i on that F on there, F on there, E on there, E on there. So everything is labeled out very well on there. Now you've got C and D on there. So there may be some minor differences on the rails. We've got A 
and I'm assuming B on there. So you do are going to need to pay attention. Don't pick that rail up thinking don't pick B up when you need A. Hope that makes sense. I'm sure it probably will do when we get down to it. All I'm saying is from the outset, pay careful attention to detail. Don't just pick the part up, assuming it's the right one. Check that it's got the right part letter on it. And speaking of those instructions, the screws and bolts to be used at each step are shown in actual size in the lower right corner of the page, which has got to be good news. So there you can see, you can match up the screw that you've got there with the one that you are taking out of the packet, which in this case looks like that one. Number two, number two. Okay, we'll start off with step number one and we need eight of screw number twos. Now what I've done is cut down the side of the packaging because obviously if all of these spill out everywhere, it kind of defeats the object of them being labeled up. So first of all, we are assembling the bed end frames, which I've got leaning up against the wall there. With the bed legs, we've got A and B on there for the taller ones at the back and C and D on there. So let me fit A and B first of all. Now do pay attention on here. Correct, part T penetrating through part A, B, C and D. Incorrect, part T not penetrating through A, B, C and D. So you don't want it through the big hole, you want it going through the small hole. Okay, well I've got the headboard end, if you like, of the bed up against the wall. Part number A on the left here. Part number B on the right. Now, in relation to what it was meaning about the screw being the right and the wrong way of the screw going through, what it doesn't mean is fitting it through that hole into there so that you're not trying to fit the screw through the big hole like that, because that would be wrong. What it is meaning, it said being very careful not to drop it down the inside of the tube, which you could easily do, is that that is gonna fit on over there and the screws are going to then go through the outside like that so i'm loosely going to put those in by hand until i can feel the threads aren't crossed then i'm going to use my cordless screwdriver to take that in until it's just tight enough on there i'm not going to power it in we're just doing using it to save a bit of effort on that and then I'm gonna tighten them by hand using the Allen key that they've provided on there that avoids stripping any of the threads or damaging any of the heads of the screws. Well, that's the first end on together fairly easily. Now I would say that part of the job can easily be done by one person. I thought I might struggle holding it on there, but not a problem at all. And we're gonna do the same when putting post B on. You're making sure that you're putting the big holes over the bars and you're not having the screw problem that I showed you just a minute ago. Once again, just get them so the threads are cashing in. Now, I will say, this is quite a lightweight bed. This is nothing to worry about holding this up on your own, putting it together. Okay, well, that's the headboard end of the bed, assembled if you like. Give yourself plenty of space on it. You don't want to be battling against the elements, so you're fighting a losing job. Now, for the short end of the headboard, we've got post D on this side, and post C on this side. Now, why they sh now, when they showed you how the incorrect way to put the screw in, because you would look at that and you think, well, hang on, post C this side, that's the right end, post D that side, I've got it up and pushed the screw through there. That is the wrong way to do it because this is going to be the bottom end of the bed. So all of these holes need to be facing that way for the frame. Hope that makes sense. So every time you fit the big holes, the, the posts through the big holes, now this bit should be, he says, relatively easy on there, but as I said, just make sure those are catching in. And you, but as I say, take your time with the, with the screws because you don't want to cross thread them, particularly if you're using a power tool like this to put them together. And trust me, it would be a worthwhile investment getting yourself to one of these rotor bits for the difference in speed it will make, particularly if you are a single parent putting this thing together where you might have time pressures of the uh, children on top of you. So just use the uh, Allen key there to tighten the screws up by hand. Make sure they are nice and tight though because quite a lot of the bed strength is gonna come from the frames at either end. Okay, the same thing on this side. As I say, don't make the mistake of putting the screw through the big hole, the big hole goes over the big pipe like this. It appears to be 
fairly well made, I have to say. Not any problems, he says, fingers crossed, with the uh, screws getting threaded or anything like that. So far, I'm not encountering any parts of this that a single person couldn't assemble on their own. And the same again on this end, just going to tighten it up with the Allen key. Now I'm talking you through this and I notice in one heart stopping moment it says T in a very small initial on the end of the bed, but both the ends of the bed are T, which they did appear to look identical, but do as I say, not necessarily as I do. <laughs> okay, now for step two, we're going to be inserting rails E into rail F and F into E, or basically pairing those up together. So. So what is that in practical terms? Well, we've got our rails E on it on the on left hand side there and our rail F on that side there. But I'm gonna check the instructions and make sure that they are exactly the same way. Yep, they are. What I mean by that is that we're not putting them together like that or anything daft on there. You want them, all of the holes facing the same way up on there. So those are simply gonna to slide together, he says. Hmm. Now, may need a little bit of pressure to get those down and located right on that. And I'm guessing the same is going to be with the other one. Yours may come slightly easier to push together. And you see that one went together without any problem at all. Now screws, we need four of number five on here which is clearly marked on here. So once again, I'm gonna cut those out. Okay, when putting E and F together, I would just point out, it says on the instructions, ensure the holes are on the top side. So they marry up with the holes on the inside, just to avoid any confusion on there. So once again, I'm just gonna finger tighten all of these screws. And if any of them don't feel quite right, back them off. That's catching just slightly. So it's maybe not clear because you do not want to cross thread any of these screws. Because if you cross thread it, if you're not sure what that is, it's the screw going in maybe an angle where the threads aren't screwing in properly and it will either damage the threads or the screw might get stuck halfway in or out on there. That one is a little bit stiff for my liking. That's a little better. A little bit stiff maybe, maybe a bit of paint on there, but no big issue. But I'm gonna tighten that one in by hand to start with. There's... I'm gonna do use a cordless screwdriver here. If you get one of these, as you can see, compared to using the Allen key, this is gonna save you a mammoth amount of time. I'm not gonna tighten that one down too far. This one, where it might have been threaded, let's just check. And that's actually screwing down in there fairly easily. So we're just testing that, just in case it was cross-threaded on that. And the same again, just going to tighten them all up by hand using the Allen key. Okay, all done. I would say make sure, I, once again though, these are nice and tight as they're going to form an, an integral part of the bed strength. Now we're going to begin to form the frame of the bed. So you do need to pay careful attention on here. F and E, E and F. And we've got H, G and H on there. That's where I said those three rails that look similar but they're very different because one has two holes in. And remember, the others just have one hole in at each end. Anyway, let me show you what I mean practically. Well, when it comes to those rails that look similar, this is where you want to pay careful attention to the labeling of them because these two are H and this one is G, which actually sits in the middle of these two. So I'm going to put this one up here. G, loosely in the middle of the room there. So give yourself plenty of room to work in and put my second H1 down here. So I've got H, G, H in terms of the rails there. Okay, when it comes to putting the rails, I've just assembled together. We want E at the bottom on the right hand side. Okay, E at the bottom, F at the top on the right hand side. And on the other side, the left hand side, as I'm looking at it now, we want E at the top and F at the bottom. Hope that makes sense on there. That is, again is a key thing, making sure you get the orientation right. If in doubt, double check or pause this video. And to assemble this, we need eight off number three screw. 
Okay, we need eight of num screw number three, but note there are 12 in total, but we only need eight for this section. Okay, now I've got everything loosely laid out. Let's get it laid out correctly. Now that may topple it over, but maybe not if I lean that against it. And you'll see G in the middle. Again, that will go on there. Final top H rail to go on there. Now, I have to say at this stage, I'm gonna put in all of the screws loosely on that side so that the rail doesn't fall over when I fit the same rail on this side. So once again, simply gonna hand screw in just to take the initial thread up on all of these screws. Again, just making sure they're not cross threaded. You shouldn't have to force any of these screws in. So if it doesn't feel right, take it back out, back it off a little bit until it does. It should go in fairly easily like that. So that's all four in on that side. Now I can lift the rail up on this side without everything falling over. So, so far it's definitely be able to be assembled with one person. And I know I go on about cross threading the screws, but if in doubt, just get that hex key on there and that one is actually screwing in fine. It was just a little bit stiff, but if they feel stiff, don't just go screwing the thing in regardless because it could be cross threaded. And if you screw it in regardless, you're going to cause serious problems for yourself. Okay, now when it comes to assembling the frame, a little bit of care to be taken here. And this is where you're gonna need a little bit of thought if you're working on your own rather than two of you on here. Because these rails, when you've got them on the side, wanna tip over all of the time. Now, you will know I have got that rail G in the middle facing upright. That is not the way it's gonna sit. It's actually gonna sit facing down like that. Very, very easy to screw them on in that position, not thinking about it if you didn't look at the diagram in close enough detail. And to make life easier, I've laid out all of the screws, one next to every screw hole that it needs to go into there. And that just saves a bit of time, makes life a lot easier, not having to keep going back to your workbench uh, to get hold of the screws. Now, I am loosely, he says, making sure we've got it in the right direction, tighten them in, just set the threads going, by hand. If they feel too stiff, don't just carry on brutally screwing them in regardless because the chances are it's cross thread. I know I'll go on about that, but if you cross thread one of these screws, it's going to ruin your day doing the assembly of, of this bed. Again, the, the rail tends to want to sit like that when you've got it lined down. Okay, but it needs to be lined the opposite way when it goes in. Now moving over, you see what I mean about the rails falling over. However, once you've got one side in, and secure. Why I'm doing them all just finger tight for the minute. If so is that once I've got the whole flame up, and nothing is falling over, life will be, he says, fingers crossed, a lot easier. Okay, once again, just finger tight on there. I'm pretty confident, I'll have to say it as yet, but I'm pretty confident you're gonna be able to assemble this bed on your own without the need for anyone else helping you. Okay, so, my frame loosely laid out on the floor. Now time to use the cordless screwdriver and again tighten each one up by hand using the Allen key. And this is where this thing really comes in to its own. Okay, so there we have the basics of the frame laid out. So my next job, simply tighten all those screws up by hand using the Allen key. So that's step three completed. Now on to step four, which is essential reading. At this stage, this bed offers you two options for the height of the bed assembly. To assemble in the higher position, you assemble from step four to step nine. To assemble in the lower position, you assemble from step 10 to step 15. So I'm thinking higher position for my daughter. So I'm gonna go through this from steps four to steps nine. And for that, I'm gonna need two of the M brackets and I'm going to need to attach them with four of screw number three. Now at step five, we have a Richie Whoa moment, okay? Because 
you might think you start assembling the bed on here so we put the footer on this end we put the headboard on that end as it shows in the diagram but the bed is the opposite way around on here with the upright posts showing on there do not make the mistake of simply lifting the frame up where it is otherwise you get halfway through the job and you're thinking hang on those posts are the wrong way around that is because in this diagram as it is set out now that's f at the top right e at the bottom on here but in step five that's e at the top and f at the bottom with the post facing down so we now need to turn the whole frame over okay now that will make attaching the frame much easier because the weight of the bed frame is now taken by those uprights by the two uprights marked m on the side there so we should just be able to virtually balance the thing taking its own weight while i lean that up and fit the bed end post to it now at each end of the frame okay we're going to start with the headboard end on here there are four screw holes on here it recommends you fitting two of the screws in here on the bottom half and two on the bottom half on this side i would do that first of all so that you are not trying say to marry up the bed post to those two on this side and then for some reason you think oh hang on i'll fit it to the top two on this side it avoids that problem entirely if you fit the screws there in the first place also i've paired two screws up around with every corner of the bed now fingers crossed he's now this single person assembling this bed on his own should be able to screw this bed frame together without any swearing still quite tricky you're gonna need some patience at this point i will say for lining up the frame on there but because of those posts behind me most of the weight of the frame is taken by those now i'm gonna leave the bottom one on that side for a second coming over to this one i'm gonna do the same just get that in there finger tight you will need a modicum of wiggling and jiggling around at this point they're not the easiest out of any of the screws so far to have put in but there we go that one is in the bottom one getting a camera angle on that is virtually impossible that one's not gone in too badly on that side so as to say if you have the screws to hand it makes life much much easier and you're not having a race across the other side of the room if you're on your own doing this as i am now fitting in these bottom two screws you are going to need quite a bit of patience with them that's probably the hardest part of this job so far okay you can see the milano bed is beginning to take shape now i simply have to put the footbed frame on what i've done here again you're going to have to fit four screws use two to fill the bottom two holes up so you don't make the same mistake so you've just got the upper two free for putting the frame in hope that makes sense i do feel that will be a job that will potentially save you from making any errors and maybe battling against the frame now the lower end of the frame here should be a little bit easier to work with he says and then it probably won't be again let's just get one screw in each side finger tight to start with so this is probably the trickiest part of the job so far a second pair of hands would be a help but i am proving you can get it done so far he says well once again the bottom bolts at this end of the bed are the hardest ones to install but i've used the um, my cutter screwdriver to tighten those up and done the hand tightening using the allen key and you can see the problem on here this bottom hole isn't lining up properly on there which is making it very awkward to fit okay well in order to get this bottom bolt in to line up i needed to twist this rail around slightly in order to do that i had to loosen this cross bolt here the two in the middle here so i'm now going to tighten those two back up tighten that one back up and what i hope is the tricky part of this assembly is now kind of done so to, so in order to get that bottom screw to to get in there i just loosened the screw under here and the two under center enabled me to twist that rail round slightly in order to get the screw hole in there that would be my one bit of advice on there you will need quite a bit of patience when doing these but so far still doing it on my own without any assistance
Okay, now for step number six, we're going to be inserting the center rails, which are these ones, handily marked I. And what we're going to do with the rails marked I, we're going to insert the slotted end into the center, that end hanging there. We're going to take this one, the slotted end. Again, that is going to go into the center and put the other one there. Then we're going to get two number one bolts, which I've got here and two nuts. And at this point, we're going to need that wrench, those two bolts, and we drop one through either end fit the nut on underneath and just fitting that on hand tight to start with as they are going to need the wrench as there are lock nuts on there so same thing at this end bolt right the way through tighten that down by hand as far as it's going to go now just checking i've got the right end of the wrench on this is where again the cordless screwdriver here tighten that down nice and tight you can see how much easier this job is with this tool. And once again, let's just tighten those by hand. And lastly, once again, just tighten each of these uh, up by hand with the hex key. It is definitely coming together now. Okay, in step seven, we're gonna need our remaining two number one bolts and our remaining two nuts. We are also going to need the third remaining M piece on here. And we're also going to need part K, which is in the handily, in the bag, marks K and Y. So I'm assuming it is this piece here. And it looks like it fits that way up on the diagram. The diagram is not ultra clear on that point, but it looks like it fits that way up. And our last middle leg is going to pop under there. You are going to need to lift the bed just marginally to get that in. Our bracket, now you wanna line the holes up roughly, hold that on by hand. The bracket K goes over the top like that, as it's gonna hold those down. Then we're gonna drop our two bolts through, and with a wiggle and a jiggle, they should fit straight through, and I can feel them coming out the holes at the other side. Again, just hand tightening them, make sure nothing falls off. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same trick with my cordless driver on the top there. I'm not gonna go super tight on both until they're both down nice and tightly on that. Now I can tighten hard. And for the last bit, once again, use that hex key just to make sure they're nice and tight. Because over a period of time, you don't want the weight and the movement of people around on the bed causing the frame to come loose. Okay, so that's step number seven completed. Step number eight is insert 01, which is all of these rails into the side of the bed as per the diagram, then lock into place with Y. And these are the part marked Y. Anyway, let me put all the frame rails in and then let's see how these fasten them in place. Now, every one of these O rails is the same with the exception they have this hole in the bottom on each side. So I'm gonna actually put that facing down. So I'm gonna slide one end in this side, lower it down that side, slide one end through there, and then I'm gonna drop that down into the gap there. Now we're gonna take this little Y piece and push that into the gap when the rail is at the bottom, locks in on that side. We're gonna do the same on this side and that locks in and the rail is now not going anywhere. When I check the instructions, that actually show it's smooth on the top. So do like I've done and put the hole facing down. I guess they may use these in a different bed set where that hole is required to be on the top. But that's my first rail in. Just all the rest to do. So push one end right in, then push the other one across, slide it back and drop it down. I feel like I'm on the, the home straight with this job now. I have to say it is very well made. General impression, I'll put a few of these things together if you check out my other videos and do subscribe if you found this one useful. And this is certainly one of the easier ones to put together, he says, and then that one, it's a little tight. We'll come back to that one in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna put all of these in and then put all of those Y pieces in there to lock them in place. Okay, well, I've got all the rails in. I'm now going through putting all of these Y clips in, which I will lean over from the top there. Hopefully you can see that. So you need to make sure it's down into the groove there. 
and then that will simply snap in place. If you've done it right, they should go in very easily, as these are doing. Bear in mind, they're gonna be the opposite way on this side of the bed. So again, just make sure they're down nice and tight. Okay, well that one I had an issue with just now. I swapped it with one of the others. There seems some slight tolerances in there, but uh, no big issue. So that is all of the rails for the bottom of the bed locked down on that side. So now just got to do the same and go down this side with these Y connector pieces. So all of the, the Y connectors in down either side of the bed. So the whole thing is now pretty much ready to go. So we're nearly done. So that is step eight complete. And step nine, we've simply got to attach our four bed posts to the bed. And once again, these came very well. They have got a sticker on, which you might want to remove, but uh, bite my fingernail. So I will get my daughter and my wife to remove those stickers, but everything comes very well packaged indeed. So there's no possibility of these uh, coming scratched on that. Do that down on that. If you're worried about that coming unscrewed, you can actually buy something which is quite cheap from model stores called Threadlock and you put a little blob of it on the thread and it locks the thread down. But if you want to remove the thing at any point, you can give it a good hard yank and it will come undone, but it will stop it coming loose accidentally. So there we are. I think that concludes the assembly. It's only needed to do steps four through nine on here. So we'll just skip through to the end of the book. These are all the steps you needed to do if you wanted to do the shorter, lower version of the bed there's a weight limit 500 pounds on there but anyway that concludes my step-by-step -step assembly of the dhp manila metal bed this is a queen size one in white and i will put a link to it below the video if anyone is interested i have to say for the money i don't think it's too bad at all that feels very very sturdy indeed although as i say the key part of it is making sure you just hand tighten every last little bolt on there particularly the ones on the central frame and the, the ones holding this frame to the bedstead ends on there but that is not going anywhere in a hurry that feels very very sturdy indeed but in conclusion i would say the bed appears to be very well built feels very very sturdy indeed it's very well made. I would have to say the tolerances, the quality of the thing feels very good indeed, having done quite a few of these self-assembly projects. But anyway, I hope you liked my review and step-by-step -step assembly guide to assembling the DHP Manila Metal Bed. If you did, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.